here's the strategy that I'm going to be applying this year to grow my trading account. I've got some fundamental investment techniques right here that I think are a good time to actually deploy. Then I'll go over some more tactical uh, trading and short term trading to time, try and time the market differences that will be happening this year. I'll leave the uh, different strategies as timestamps in the description. Firstly, though, what we need to look at is just buy and hold. If you want to grow an account 10x, let's say, how can we do this? The first is just by understanding where we are in the market cycle right now. As you can see, Bitcoin is trading at, let's say, 16, 17,000 with a total valuation of around 300 million uh, billion dollars. Sorry. Where are we in the cycle? We are in the area where you buy. Now, I don't know where the price is going to be. I don't know how volatile it's going to be this year. But if we look at the long term Bitcoin cycles, you can hopefully see a pattern right here. Each time the pool multiple gets down to this level, this is a buying opportunity. Now, it doesn't tell us exactly where the bottom will be. It doesn't tell us if, um, you know, things are going to get worse in terms of the price. But I'm just thinking if you're trying to grow an account 10x, what is the least risky way of doing this? It's looking right now at this Bitcoin cycle where we have this pure multiple telling us that each time it's in the green zone is the absolute best time to buy. If you're not buying during a bear market, you're doing investing wrong. Buying during bull markets, buying when prices are at all time highs is ridiculous. The whole point of making money is buying lower. And that is buying when other people aren't and when other people are saying it's going lower, it's going lower. This is sounds really simple, but a lot of people don't get this. So why I think this is the best uh, way is because let's look at Bitcoin prices right now. Bitcoin's 300 billion. Let's go over to where it sits in terms of assets. Now, Bitcoin stands out here because it is a commodity and it's been called a commodity. I'm sure you're watching this video because you think that Bitcoin and crypto has some sort of future. If we look around here at Bitcoin, it's sitting in between Nestle and Home Depot. These are equities. They're based on how much money they can make and their earnings per share and a multiple upon that. Bitcoin is not that. It is a monetary bearer asset. And the best thing we can compare it to is gold which sits at number one, multiples above any other equity. Equities are not worth the same as commodities, gold and silver in the top five. If we think that gold is, uh, Bitcoin is a better version of gold, we are looking over the long term a much higher valuation than any equity. And let's look around 12 trillion for gold, 300 billion for Bitcoin. This cycle could potentially be the last time we get a fairly decent move. As you can see here, Bitcoin cycles are reducing in the amount of gains that they give per cycle. 620x in this cycle, 132, 20 in the last cycle. And so the amounts that we're actually uh, getting in terms of from low to high of a cycle getting smaller. This may be one of the last cycles where we get um, a really good opportunity to buy in at a low price with a, let's say, five, six, seven X in the next cycle. The pure multiple is telling us we're in the buy zone to get myself out of the equation, as you can see here again. Let's look also at the MVRV Z score. Again, it's showing us we are in the zone. I'll get myself out the way right here. So it doesn't pick price bottoms. It doesn't tell you how long you're going to be here, but it tells you you're in the zone. I don't understand any other time that you would be buying and dollar cost averaging right here for the next cycle. But you do have to wait a few years. You can't do it within six months. It's just not going to happen. I'll get to tactical situations later on in the video. As you can see here, drawdowns from all time highs. We are going upwards, which is obviously a good thing. So the actual drawdown from the all time high is getting slightly less each time. The asset is maturing and it is about to be brought on by governments and the huge institutions like BlackRock, Fidelity and so on. So if you're looking for a 10x, I think this is the part of the cycle where you actually get that 10x. You don't get it at buying highs like we saw last cycle. Before I get on to some more tactical trading techniques, I want to talk about something very specific to crypto, which is airdrops. And this is no joke. There are literally tens of thousands of dollars available, essentially just for being early on using an application or a network and getting airdropped some of the value of those tokens. As an example, if you just used Uniswap before, back in around 2020, 
uh, they would airdrop you around 400 uni tokens. Now at the time, that was worth around $1,500 just for making a couple of swaps on that application. At the high, it was literally 10x that. As you can see here as well, Aptos recently launched in October. The tokens at the time are worth around $1,200 just for using the network. You're not even putting any of your you know, trading account up for this and you're making 1200 bucks. It was actually way more when the price went up there. So what's coming? Well, MetaMask is one of the biggest applications in crypto and there is a token coming. Joe Lubin has hinted on several occasions that a token is in the works. Now, I've got a video on airdrops specifically, so I'll link that in the description about the biggest airdrops for 2023 uh, and what will be happening. Also, we have here a layer two network on Ethereum called ZK Sync. If you missed, um, you know, if you missed Aptos, ZK Sync is the next and could potentially offer even more free money. Now, it's not free. You do have to actually use the protocol, use some applications on there. But the test net does not have a token. If you interact with ZK Sync or some of the applications on top of that, when they launch tokens, they often do give airdrops. This is not a joke. This is thousands of dollars just for using these networks early on. It's a massive opportunity to actually grow your account just by using some of these networks. I'll leave that video linked in the description, which goes through this in much more detail. Now I wanna talk about trading more tactically, both going long and potentially going short and how people would do this. So the first thing we can do is come to a trading system you know, buy, uh, buy a bit, bit, get something like that. I'll leave links to them in the description for deposit bonuses. So if you're trading anyway, get the deposit bonuses there uh, via those links. Um, what we can do is just come and decide when we want to go long or if we want to go short. So on a long strategy, I think the biggest strategy for 2023 is really the flip, uh, the flip of central banks and the Fed. So I want to talk about, um, you know, how we time this sort of thing. So the first thing to do on a trading system is just to get some price levels out there. So if you see support and resistance, put these lines and support levels on, right? So as you can see, after the FTX disaster, we actually came to a support level right here. And so that is on the chart for me as a support level where we would expect to see support. If it breaks through that, then you can obviously trade tactically down to the next support and resistance levels. I've got some other videos on kind of technical analysis and how to do that, which I'll leave in the description as well. The Crypto Investor course has like 300 trading videos as well. So um, check that out if you want. I'll leave that linked as well. But what we want to do is try and time this flip if we're looking to go long. I don't think the time to go long tactically is right now, but it will come at some point. So there's a few things we can look at. Firstly is the market cycle. As you can see here, I'll leave links to the Twitter um, for Eric McCall as well so you can see this. We're in a risk off period right now, but at some point it always flips because central banks are there to support growth when growth isn't there. So as we can see at some point in the next 6, 12, 18 months, this will flip. And when the central banks flip, traders will use this to go risk on. We can also see the global liquidity cycle as well, right down at the bottom of this point. We don't need to go leverage long at this point. We can actually wait uh, long enough until all of the indicators are telling us and the central banks are telling us hey we want you to go risk on now and we're going to start maybe pausing rate hikes or either reducing rates as well so we can actually wait until this happens i want to show you this chart as well um, now if you have trading view trading view is completely for free so uh, another link in the description to that use it and put this chart on this is the federal funds uh, upper term limit. So as you can see here, this is DFED TARU or T-A-R-U, right? So you want federal funds target range upper limit. Now, as you can see, there is a big correlation between the federal funds rate and Bitcoin. During the uh, previous cycle, as you can see here, when we got this blow off top, now the federal funds rate, which is the interest rate that the Fed sets, started raising right here. They started raising this federal funds rate. And as you can see, as soon as they started raising it, what happened to the price of Bitcoin? It collapsed. As the dollar gets stronger and as people go more towards lower risk, more into treasuries, risk like Bitcoin sells off. So as the rate is going up, Bitcoin is selling off. Now, as you can see, the absolute bottom of Bitcoin was right here when the Fed paused the raising of rates. So when the Fed paused, that was the bottom for Bitcoin. There is absolutely no reason why that would not be the case once more, given that we know that Bitcoin is essentially a monetary asset that trades the reverse of rates, dollar strength and growth in the economy, right? So we are in a risk off, low growth part of the cycle. 
and rates were zero down here and you saw what happened to Bitcoin. So if we're looking ahead, what we want to find out is when is the Fed done? When are the Fed going to stop raising rates? Well, we can look for that. They have meetings and everything. You can watch my market update videos. At some point, they are going to pause rates and the market is going to like that and start to bid risk again. And that is a potential flip. Now, not only is the pausing of rates probably decent as an indicator for some sort of bottom for Bitcoin, but it's when they cut rates, that's when you get the big rises because then they're weakening the dollar. Uh, they're essentially incentivizing traders to go more risk, right? They want more money in the system, more liquidity, more risk on. And we can see we're right at the bottom of that cycle now. If you're trading tactically on a short-term trade, trying to leverage trade and trying to grow the account, you don't wanna be taking those positions now. You want to wait until all of these are in place when the Fed are saying and other central banks are saying, we're pausing and even cutting. Once they're doing that, you know that there's essentially what's called the Fed put, where you can just go long and have a pretty good probability of going long on dips and, and kind of having a rising market for risk, risk assets because they're trying to stimulate the economy. I don't know when this is gonna happen, but we don't need to know. We just need to wait for this to happen, the Fed funds rate um, to actually start pausing and coming down, and it always does. We can wait for that whenever it comes to actually start trying to take more risk again. Now, from a tactical perspective, how do we trade that? We go over and wait for that to start happening. Whatever the price of Bitcoin is at the time or whatever your preferred method of trading that sort of thing is, that's when you can start to take long positions but not yet. We don't want to do that yet. So um, if you want to know more about how to use Bybit or BitGet and trading like that, I'll leave links to our tutorials in the description. The other way to trade tactically is to go short. And it's actually another thing that crypto does really well because you have access to going short, which is betting on the price going down of a lot of altcoins. Uh, and this potentially has much higher probability of actually working out. Considering that most projects will fail, considering that most small projects will fail, and also considering that most small projects actually require funding uh, for their development, we can assume that there is a lot of selling of these coins out from the development team for early investors. Now, this is something that in the TradFi world, you, you just can't do. You can't short small assets like this. Um, you don't have access to them. And a lot of these would be private equity where you can't have access to trading in the tokens or the equity anyway. But in crypto, you can. So one of the things um, that traders will do here is look, firstly, which assets have a huge amount of supply left over. This goes into tokenomics where, look, these assets, let's, let's get rid of Bitcoin and ETH and those bigger assets. These smaller applications are businesses who have raised funds by selling these tokens. Are they unregistered securities? Probably yes. So that's another downside for these tokens as well. But the way that they develop their applications is by selling their tokens for dollars. And they also, what they have, are these huge amounts of tokens that are left over to incentivize the team, the advisors, the early investors, and to pay for the development of the token. Now, given that most altcoins and applications are just simply going to fail, that's just the odds. 80 to 90% of them will be worth nothing and they will fail. So if you're taking short positions in these, given all the inherent risks of shorting, which there are many, the probability that you will be right in some of those trades is far higher than leverage longing all of these, right? So if we if we know that 80 to 90% of applications are going to fail, the, the logical thing to do is to take short positions in them. Now, there are many risks which I'll go over. So as an example here, we have token unlocks. Now, this shows all of the tokens that uh, all of the projects that have many tokens left to unlock. As you can see, Aptos has 86% of its tokens left to unlock. That means early investors are going to be getting these tokens for free. And what are they gonna do with them? They're probably going to be selling them out on the market. So we have a supply and demand imbalance of a small project that potentially 
is or going to fail and a lot of tokens dumped on the market from early investors who are cashing out. Now, this isn't going to happen for all of these tokens. Some will be successful and successful enough to actually kind of absorb that sell pressure and actually move higher, especially in a bull market for sure. So you have to be tactical about when you do this and when you time it. Just some examples here. So as we can see, um, we are going to look at optimism. We're going to go total unlocked or total locked and see how much is left to unlock. Also daily unlock right here. So the optimism token has two and a half million dollars a day of tokens unlocking and 75% of the tokens locked up left to unlock. Now that sounds pretty bearish, right? Actually with optimism, this isn't one that I would short because it's actually a successful network. You can see right here from June Analytics, again, all these uh, dashboards and stuff linked down below. The transactions per day on Optimism are growing. The on-chain value is pretty decent. Uh, transacting addresses is growing. Transaction fees earned is growing. And so even though Optimism potentially has a lot of tokens to come onto the market, um, it's not a candidate for a short because it's actually from what I can see, a successful project that is growing over time. And so what you want to look for is to come down the list and see what projects are number one, just failed. Like if you look at the usage data, you look at the amount of users that's going down, right? The app looks to have failed and not really doing anything also that has unlocks coming. So let's look at some others. We've got Sweat Token, I think, uh, which I'll, I'll just show you right here. This is no shade against these projects. It just is investing and trading tactically. As you can see over the next few years, you have a huge amount of tokens that are gonna be unlocked. And, and what, they, what they're gonna do, they're gonna probably dump them on the market. You can see Sweat Co Limited has 22% of these tokens that will start unlocking towards the end of 2023. Now, if this project isn't growing properly, then these tokens are probably going to be sold off, right? As investors cash out their investment. And if there's no demand for the token, then it goes down in value. Um, so what you can do obviously is go and trade this. This is the sweat token right here. And as you can see, I mean, it's a bear market, right? So a lot of these will come down, but maybe it doesn't recover. And so you can take tactical short positions. Again, I've got uh, guides on how to do that. And in the crypto investor course, I've got short selling guides as well. Now, the risks of this are many. The first one is that there are many tokens which are going to be launching, uh, you know, new projects, um, new businesses or whatever, uh, incentive programs and stuff, which can short term have a lot of uh, demand for the token. And so what you usually get, especially with small tokens, is very large short covering events. And so it's uh, very difficult during that time if you are short, because remember, if you're short, you're bidding on the price going down. And so if the price is rising right here, you're actually losing money in that short position. And so it's very difficult, especially with short tokens. They can have these short covering events. They can have these kind of wicks where it goes up like 150% in a day if something happens. And that is essentially short traders getting wrecked and having to buy back and take out of their position. So there's a lot of things to be aware of when managing a short position for sure. But during you know a bear market, which we're in, given that uh, all of these tokens are getting released out onto the market, and probably being sold off, as you can see here, a huge cliff of unlocks, the probability is that that is at least gonna hold the price down. And so you have a better probability of actually trading short some of these altcoins, especially during bear markets, um, rather than trying to tactically go long and trying to time um, you know, the, the bull market as well. During the bull market, these unlocks are gonna have much less influence. But until that time comes, all of these unlocks are just gonna pile on even more selling pressure onto some of these tokens. And so that's a way to tactically take advantage of falling prices as well. It's not for the faint hearted. You have to know about trading futures and managing positions as well. It's really, really important. You can get really wrecked as well when taking short positions if you haven't got a stop loss in right here. Um, so again, I'll leave some extra tutorials on you know trading uh, linked in the description below. So this year you can either take investments for the long term like in BTC during these cycles. You can wait for a market flip to be more tactical or you can go short some altcoins that you think are just overvalued. Each of those has its own set of risks 
um, and benefits as well. Shorting or trading on leverage or trading in futures is not for everyone. Um, so definitely go in with your eyes open when you are taking extra risks with trading. But I'll leave the Crypto Investor course link below if you want to get a bit more professional with that. Also some other free videos and the links to Bybit, BitGet, etc. down there as well. I'm James with MoneyZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.